Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. I wanted to take a minute to do an introduction to Op2. I did not have a chance to film uh, right before starting the machining. So what I wanted to do is just quickly cover it. So essentially all I'm doing is flipping, you know, Op1 over to the left side of the palette. And let's sort of go to our top view here. And all I have on the left side here, now it's shown at the top, um, is just a contour and then a set of Mighty Bite blunt edge pit bull clamps. So really what I'm doing here with this contour is I, I basically machine the left side of the palette as you would a soft jaw on a vise. So these pit bull clamps are pushing uh, the part up against that contour, which worked well. Uh, the one thing I was disappointed with is the pit bull clamps, even though they were the blunt edge, they did mar the backside of my part. So there are marks there. Uh, that was unfortunate, so that's something to keep in mind if you are using them. Maybe in the future I will try the the brass pit bull clamp to see if that helps. Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions on how to use the pit bull clamps without marring your part, or maybe that's just something you have to live with. Again, it's not a big deal. I think I can buff it out, but it is a consideration. So another thing that I've done, it, I did, is you'll see there are tons of pit bull clamps and talons. So what I did is I essentially just made a template of the pocket for the talons and the pit bull clamps. And if we go back to the fixture, I just use that template to essentially do a pattern in a straight line for where I wanted the talons and the pit bulls on my fixture and that seemed to work out well. So with all that said, what we'll do now is we'll just walk through the tool paths and then we'll see them on the machine. So the first thing that I do is a 3D adaptive clearing just to go ahead and remove all the material. So again, here I am using the half of an inch Haas index, mini indexable end mill, I'm just trying to remove as much material as I can. Uh, moving on to finishing, so here I used a 3D flat tool path to go ahead and finish the inside pocket as well as the top face of the coolant manifold. From there we get into our O-ring groove and here I am using an eighth of an inch high feed end mill from Helical that's meant for non-ferrous metals. So in the past I've broken quite a few one eighth inch end mills trying to make O-ring grooves probably user error on my half but what i found is that if i use the high feed end mills and i just essentially go the full width of the slot when you're using the high high feed end mills the depth of cut is like six or seven thousand so i have not ran into a case yet where i broke an eighth of an inch end mill trying to make an o-ring groove so if you have any suggestions or comments on how you are making o-ring grooves please leave those in the comment section so once we have our 1 8 inch o-ring groove finished, we now go into a drilling and a threading operation where essentially what we are doing is thread milling M3 holes along the top face of the coolant manifold so that we can attach our lid and then that lid will ap apply downward pressure onto our o-ring and hopefully seal the manifold so that we won't have any leaking. So another thing I'll note here is for smaller holes I've moved back to thread milling uh, I was rigid tapping but I've ruined quite a few pieces of stock now trying to rigid tap with very small taps so I've switched if it's M4 or less I thread mill now and we will go ahead and finish up here with just your typical chamfering toolpath trying to remove any of the burrs and so that's it. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and transition to the machining. All right, so here we begin our 3D adaptive clearing. Again, I am in MPG dry run or MPG sim, just kissing the material before I let it go full blast. That way I don't crash my machine. So here, here you go, I send it. So again, 120 inches per minute a quarter of an inch or 250 thou width of cut and 200 thou depth of cut. Just trying to remove as much material as I can. And you can see we just sort of uh, jumped to a few different places in the video or a few different views 
just so that you can sort of see the machine and the end mill doing its work. Again, lately I've been finding myself purchasing more and more Haas tooling just because with the Winter Circle you get the 5% discount and you get free shipping. So let me know if you guys are using Haas tooling as well and what you think about it. So far it seems to be a good bang for the buck. So here we're going to transfer into our 3D flat and so again we're just going to finish the inside of the pocket and then the you know the top face of the manifold we're running at 72 inches per minute 163 thousandths for the width of cut and I left 20 thousandths of stock so the depth of cut is 20 thousandths again here I'm using a 3 eighths of an inch YG1 end mill and so that is it for the 2D flat tool or sorry 3D flat tool path and so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump into the o-ring groove and so here I'm using the 1 8 inch helical high feed end mill going 60 inches per minute an eighth of an inch with the cut and 6,000 depth of cut at 10,000 rpm just trying to move along and get that o-ring groove finished without breaking any tools. So I think in the future, maybe I will try some dedicated O-ring end mills, you know, sort of like the ones that Pearson sells for his vacuum pallet system. Uh, they should make the O-ring groove and chamfer at the same time. So I think those will be worth a try. So here we get into our drilling operation. I'm using a KineMetal Go Drill, 10,000 RPM and 20 inches per minute, just using a drill with a rapid retract. So we'll just go ahead and watch the drilling. I do enjoy the KineMetal Go Drills. They are a little pricey. So Haas, again, mentioning Haas, they do sell carbide drills and I have been purchasing those and I you can usually get them on sale for around 15 to 20 bucks so it's much cheaper than a $50 a $50 kin metal go drill all right so here we go into our thread mill I'm using an online carbide thread mill and we're running at 10,000 rpm and again I am threading these M3 I'm always a little wary using the tiny thread mills. Again, any error in your fusion settings or any error in your toolpath, then you're going to break, you know, a $30 end mill pretty quickly. So that's always, you're always a little stressed watching <laughs> the, the tiny holes be thread mill. So that's it for the thread milling. And so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and transition into the chamfering toolpath, and that should finish us off. And so here we are chamfering with a 1 8 inch helical chamfer, 55 inches per minute at 10,000 RPM, just trying to get rid of any of the burrs that may have been left behind. And so that is it for the machining. All right, so here we are with Op 2 finished. Again, the part looks beautiful. Let's look here. Our M3 threads seem fine. It might be a little looser than I wanted to be, so I might go in and fine tune my thread mill settings, but everything seems to have went well. O ring groove looks fine. Again, really liking the Mighty Bite Pitbull clamps. I'm hoping they didn't mar the side of my part, that's why I went with the blunt edge, but we shall see shortly. And so that's about it.